All right, it's 5.44, I'm here at Smith's, 5.44 a.m. I really need some guacamole ingredients, so I'm waiting 16 minutes till it opens, then I'm gonna go in. I want to explain to you how I choose what rooms I play. Most cities don't really have a choice like this. Atlantic City, there's two on the marina side. Kansas City, there's two. Northern Maryland, there's two. Phoenix area, there's two. Um, usually it's like one or two. Uh, Vegas still has 17 poker rooms. So how do I decide where I'm playing? There are two characteristics that I really, really like in a poker room. The first is not to discourage players from entering the room who you want to be playing with. Remember Hooker Guy? Uh, he was like featured in two of my videos uh, towards the end of last year. I actually saw him two days ago for the first time in months. Not a coincidence that I saw him in the temp room, but I haven't been seeing him in the permanent new room at Bally's. People who don't plan on playing poker all day are a lot of fun and they're often poor players. Uh, but it's a very social table. When I'm trying to play a ton of hours, that's something I'm looking for. A very social table makes time go by quickly. Trooper Thursday, time goes goes by very quickly. Uh, Bellagio, it's like the opposite, and you're just watching the clock. There have been times in Bellagio I've played, and it feels like three and a half hours, and it's like 34 minutes. So people who might walk by a poker room, discover that it's there, and ditch whatever else they were gonna do and sit down and play for a while, I want those people to feel invited and actually make it inside the room. Planet Hollywood was the best for this, uh, specifically the second to last location that was just in the middle of the casino. Everybody walked by, it was amazing. So I don't want those types of people to feel uninvited, to feel like there's a barrier for them to enter the room. Like, uh, I've been places where there are like literally glass doors. You need to open glass doors and walk into the poker room or you're not playing. That's not nearly as inviting as just walking through a casino and you see tables and people and you can sit down. The second thing is that I don't want it very easy for people to make their way to the tables who you don't want to be playing with. People who bring novels to the table to read. People who are glued to their screens. People who like are at the table but don't really want to have anything to do with poker. Uh, they exist in the poker room for like comp reasons or like killing time reasons or because like they don't get the channel of a certain game. I don't want them to feel comfortable in a poker room. When chairs are incredibly comfortable, they show up. When chairs are old and very uncomfortable and the levers are broken, they don't show up. When it's very clean in the poker room and very modern, they show up. When it's like old and a little dilapidated and maybe vintage and dirty and dark and loud, they never show up. So those are the characteristics I like. I want certain people to feel invited and show up, and I want certain people to not wanna play. And the rooms that have those two attributes, I frequent a lot. Um, and it changes year to year. Um, sometimes locations change. There are remodels, um, new furniture, new colors, uh, things like that. I was in MGM National Harbor the day we moved from the ground level to the second floor. Uh, ground level was so much better if you're wondering. So those are some of the attributes. And I know last year MGM and Bally's were my top two rooms in terms of hours in Vegas. Uh, this year, I think MGM is still one. I don't know what two is. I'll look it up later for you. I'll put it on the screen right now. Um, my guess would actually be Westgate, maybe. Um, so it changes. But those are the things I'm looking for, especially in a city like Vegas, where there's a ton of choice. Still 17 poker rooms in this city. And remember, rice is a spoon food.